Um, clear ba sa lahat? Hello? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So, um, welcome again. So, our today's, um, today's topic is all about historical antecedents which change the course of science and technology. So, wait lang guys. So, our learning outcome, at the end of this chapter, the learner should be able to trace the historical development of science and technology in the world um, from ancient, middle, and modern ages, and also in the Philippines. And also demonstrate appreciation for the development in science and technology. So, let's start. So, it is well established fact that science and technology impacts all aspects of our lives. Science and technology is associated in all means with modernity and is considered as essential for rapid development. So the state of science and technology determines the socioeconomic progress of a certain country. So a country who is not able to implement science and technology would not progress and reap the benefits of development. So historical history of science and technology in the world um, from ancient times. So science and technology has been around from the beginning of time. It involves from the everyday efforts of people trying to improve their way of living um, throughout the history. Humankind and utilize tools, machines, and techniques without understanding how or why they work or comprehend their physical or chemical composition. So science and technology can be traced from the origin of human life two million years ago and each era has significant advancement. So the, the, earl, the earliest form of science and technology were human artifacts found during prehistoric times of about um, 2.3 million years ago. Uh, they were roughly shaped stone used for chopping, scraping, and found primarily, primarily in Eastern Africa. So as you can see here, uh, some of the earliest records of science from um, Mesopotamia culture of around 400 BC. Also, na found out din dito, um, there was a disease, disease symptoms or chemical substance, and also astronomical observation were some of the evidence of emerging science. Uh, during the same period naman, in Nile Valley of Egypt, um, mga 300 to 400 BC, uh, information on the treatment of wounds and diseases, and even some of the mat mathematical calculations such as angles, rectangles, and triangles, and the volume of the portion of the pyramid had been around for thousands of years. So from 300 to 400 BC, uh, there was also a rising number of philosophers um, who wrote the topics on psychology, biology, and host of other topics. Uh, also, um, note natin dito, there was Euclid, uh, who is the founder of modern geometry. As you can see, it's a pictures. Also, Archimedes, the founder of engineering, uh, engineering mechanics, and calculated a value of pi, which is still used to this very day. So, 3000 BC um, gave rise to the Bronze Age. So, in the research of finding pigments used to color for the human skin, um, due to the discovery of um, new copper. So, then it was realized that, um, no panahon, Ang alloy in copper with tin um, resulted into bronze, um, which in those days, um, ginagamit siya um, for making swords and other weapon, uh, mga weapons. So today, yung bronze, um, ginagawa natin um, to build machineries, um, mga medals, statues, belts, and shoe buckles. Uh, Okay, so urbanization is the development of large cities. So itong cities na to um, first emerged in 3000 BC. Ito yung Egypt. So during this time, the first pyramid was built. Uh, also, pyramids are adopted the most outstanding development in science and technology and also still marble up to this present. So... So during the Middle Age uh, or 
uh, during the uh, year 450 to 4050 AD, uh, it gave birth to many scientific and technological development. So also during this age, um, tinatawag din siyang um, dark ages. So warfare had improved tremendously during this time, uh, during this middle age. So, ayun. Uh, during the uh, during the Renaissance era in Europe, um, during the year fourteen fifty and sixteen thousand um, AD, uh, it began uh, in Europe. Uh, it began in fourteen fourteen fifty, and also lasted in sixteen hundred. So in this period, the man, uh, um, the in this period, um, rebirth of knowledge. Uh, it is called it is called rebirth of knowledge. So during this time of Renaissance era. So in Germany, uh, German, uh, Germany naman, uh, Gutenberg developed the printing press, um, which resulted in the books being printed instead of huge volume of text being handwritten. So, yan siya. It was um, created during 15th century AD. So let's go to Italy. Uh, in Italy, naman, uh, Leonardo da Vinci, uh, it is a great pioneer in arts, architecture, engineering, and science. He also stressed the importance of experiment. So if he produced a vast series of notebooks with observation of anatomy, um, cloud formation, plants for sites, uh, military inventions, um, tanks, flying machines, and submarines. So yan yung my contributions ni Leonardo da Vinci. Also, um, Copernicus uh, rediscovered what some of the ancient Greeks had known that the sun was at the center of the solar system and that the earth revolves around it. So the era also gave way to ge geographic discovery beginning with um, the inventions of triangle sail, Ayan, as you can see in the picture, and also the magnetic compass. So this aided Prince Henry, the navigator, to travel around South Africa, Portugal, um, also to reach India. Uh, it was uh, same. It was around the same time uh, Columbus discovered the Americas. So um, also quarantine. Um, it was. It is a word um, created on 14th century AD. Uh, so for so, um, the growth of maritime, uh, it happens during the growth of maritime trade and the recognition that plague was introduced by ships returning. So originally, the period was 30 days or 20 na. Um, but this was later extended to 40 days quarantine. So it was a decree or dictated that the ships were to be isolated for a limited period to allow for manifestations of diseases and to dissipate the infection brought by persons and also the goods. Uh, so the choice of this period is said are said to be based on the period that Christ and Moses spent in isolation in the desert uh, to allow for more for manifestation of disease and to dissipate the infection brought by the persons and the goods. So it um the new word na, na quarantine uh, nangyari or ginagawa. So let's go to the modern science and technology um, around 6,100 AD. So Galileo was the first to use modern scientific method um, based on experiment and testable observation. In 1608, um, some spectacle maker came to the Republic of Venice uh, where Galileo was staying with their new invention. So ito yung spyglass. Um, it is used for identifying ships well before they enter a harbor. So Galileo narinig niya about itong klaseng um, invention na to. And he tried to figure it out o kung paano siya ginagawa or paano siya nag-work. So he created one. So he only he not only succeeded in constructing his own spyglass, but also he, he built a second one with magnification step up by eight. And finally, 30 times, um, 30 times which is now known as the tel telescope. So yun yung ginagamit natin ngayon. He was also able to discover um, craters, um, mountains on the moon. He later invented the microscope and also the thermometer. Um, as you can see in the picture, ayan yung mga inventions niya. Um, 
on the first picture, it is a brass Galileo style compound microscope. Also, things telescope on the second picture, and also the last one is the thermometer. So next, um, Isaac Newton. Um, he was born in 1642. Uh, he helped define the laws of gravity and planetary motion. He also confounded um, calculus and explained the laws of light and color. Um, Albert Einstein. He became the most famous scientist of the 21st century. His work had profound impact on everything from quantum theory to nuclear power and also the atomic bomb. And came up also the famous equation E equals MC squared used in calculus. And so in terms of modern technology, um, the Industrial Revolution brought about the beginning of factories um, being built to produce goods at massive quantity. So in the late 1800s, the light bulb began to replace candles and oil lamps. So then it start yung paggamit natin ng um, lamps, uh, light lamp, bulb pala. So the 20th century also gave birth to the radio, also the first car to run with engine power. Um, the first man went to the space in a rocket. Uh, also, it all it also uh, the beginning of communication, electronics, and computer e era up to this day. So as you can see, ito yung mga modern technologies that we have today. So let's go now to science and technology in the Philippines. So ito yung mga historical perspective natin during our time. So Philippine science and technology has a long history. So it started before Spain col colonized the country where some indigenous technology already existed with regards to wet rice and dry agriculture. So ayan. We also use technology evidence in the handicraft making, um, pottery, uh, weaving, um, mga metalwares, um, also creating boats. Um, it also used by ancient Filipinos. So the natives were already aware of the medical and therapeutic properties of plants and methods of extracting medicine from herbs. So noong pan unang panahon, uh, meron na tayong um, culture or um, what do you call that? Um, ways um, to use technology and also um, um, extracting mga medicine, herbs na pag-cure sa, sa diseases noon. So they also use alphabet, um, a system of writing, also a method of a method of counting, uh, weight, and also pag-measure. Uh, although, no, noong unang panahon, wala pa tayong calendar, um, but uh, the native Filipino counted the years by the period of the moon and from the one harvest to another. So, Filipino was, were also already engaged in farming, um, shipbuilding, mining, and also weaving. Um, the most prominent or most known um, ways, ways of um, uh, farming natin is the Banawi ri rice terraces. So it is a sophisticated product of engineering by pre-Spanish Filipinos. Okay. So let's go now to Spanish colonial period. So the colonization of the Philippines um, contributed to the growth of science and technology in the archipelago. The Spaniards introduced formal education and founded scientific institution. Uh, during the early years of Spanish rule in the Philippines, um, parish schools were established uh, where religion, reading, writing, arithmetic, and musical was taught. Also, um, during this period, sanitation and more advanced methods of agriculture uh, were introduced to the natives. So later on, um, the Spanish establishes established colleges and universities in archipelago, including yung well-known um, institution natin today, the uh, University of Santo Tomas. Also, the study of medicine in the Philippines was given priority. So in 1871, um, the School of Medicine and Pharmacy was opened at the University of Santo Tomas. 
It also contributed to the field of engineering in the islands by constructing government buildings, ang mga churches natin, roads, bridge, and mga ports. So the Jesuits promoted meteorological studies and founded the Manila Observatory at Ateneo Municipal de Manila in 1865. So let's go now to the American period and post-Commonwealth post era. So the progress of science and technology continued under the American rule. Um, during this time, on July 1, 1901, the Philippine Commission established the Bureau of Government Laboratories, which placed under the Department of Interior. The Bureau replaced the, laboratory, the lab Laboratorio Municipal, which was established during the Spanish era. Um, on October 26, 1905, the Bureau of Government Laboratories was replaced by the Bureau of Science, um, the Bureau dealt with the study of tropical diseases um, with the process of science and technology. And on December 8, 1933, um, the National Research Council of the Philippines was recognized. So the Bureau of Science became the primary research center of the Philippines under uh, World War II. So science, science during the American period was inclined towards um, some agriculture, natin, food processing, forestry, uh, medicine, and also pharmacy. Uh, not much focus was given on the development of industrial technology kasi dahil sa free trade policy natin with the United States, um, which also nurtured the mga economy natin uh, gearing towards agriculture and also trade. So in 1946, the Bureau of Science was replaced by the Institute of Science. In 1956, uh, during the regime of President Carlos P. Garcia, the Philippine Congress passed the Science Act of 1958, um, which established the National Science Development Board. So that, uh, every, uh, yan yung mga during the American period and also Commonwealth era. So let's go now to Marcos era and also uh, Marcos era and martial law. Um, science was given importance um, during the Marcos regime. So, in in the amendment of the 1973 Philippine Constitution, Article 15, um, Section 9, Paragraph 1, he declared that the, the advancement of science and technology shall have priority in national development. Um, in his two terms of presidency and during martial law, uh, many laws were enacted promoting science and technology. Ito yung um, mga laws na enact during his term. Um, on, June, on January 23, 1967, uh, he declared the science was necessary for the development programs and thus directed the Department of Education to revitalize science courses in public schools, DepEd and National Science Development Board or the NSDB. Um, organize a, the NSB organized a project to provide selected high schools with science in, with science teaching equipment over a four-year period. So in 1968, um, technology was recognized as, as the leading factor in economic development. And thus, additional funds were channeled to support projects in applied science and science education. A big part of the ward damage funds was allocated to fund private universities and encourage them to pursue programs in science, technology, and also in research. So seminars were also conducted for public and private high school and college science teachers. So training programs, uh, mga scholarship, um, were, um, were also um, given to graduate and undergraduate science scholars. So this was during the Marcos era. Um, also, additional uh, the National Science Development Board um, established the Philippine Atomic Energy Commission to explore the uses of atomic energy for economic development. So, si Marcos, uh, he assisted the uh, 107 institutions in undertaking nuclear energy work um, by sending our Filipino scientists, um, mga engineers, doctors, and technicians to study um, nuclear science and technology sa ibang bansa. So, ito yung mga ginawa niya. Uh, major development also, uh, projects to reform education were done and which included research and development. 
um, establishment of technical institute, science education centers, and agricultural college, colleges, and vocational high school. So the Philippine Council for Agricultural Research was also established. Yan. Sorry. Was also established uh, to support the progressive development of agriculture, forestry, fisheries um, for the country. Um, the council was attached to the Department of Agriculture and Natural Resources for administrative purposes. So Department of Agriculture and DNR was merged into one agency. Um, but now, um, separate na siya. So another ag agency was established by the Presidential Decree Number uh, 49, Series of 1972. And this is the Philippine Atmospheric Geophysical and Astronomical Services, or also yung kilala natin ngayon as a pag-asa. Under the Department of, Na it is under the Department of National Defense. So its function was to provide environmental protection and to utilize scientific knowledge to ensure the safety of the people. And also, um, the, Philipp um, the Philippine National Oil Company was also created to promote industrial and economical development through effective and efficient use of energy sources. Uh, it was um, decree, um, uh, presidential decree number 334 of 1973. Ayan. So, what else? Uh, in 1979, uh, the government funded scientific research conducted by the, by the National Science Development Board, or NSDB, on the Philippine Council for Agriculture Research and Resources, uh, the Plant Breeding Institute, uh, the International Rice Research Institute, um, the Bureau of Plant Industry, and the Bureau of Forest Products. So the National Committee on Geological Sciences was created in 1980 uh, to advise the government and private entities on matters pertaining to geological sciences. Um, it was enacted by Executive Order Number 625, 1980. Uh, also by the virtue of the President or Executive Order Number 784 in 1982, the National Science Development Board in its support agency was reorganized and was named um, National Science and Technology Authority, or NSTA, uh, to provide central direction and coordination of scientific, scientific and technological research and development. Also, um, the Mindanao and Visayas campuses um, of the Philippines Science High School um, were established in 1986. So, uh, to, this is to encourage careers in science and technology and to be more accessible to talented students ng mga, min, mga taga Mindanao and also Visayas areas uh, in accordance with Executive Order Number 1090 on uh, series of 1986. Okay, so before I continue pa, um, na, nasasabayan niyo ba, class? Hello? Apo, sir. Okay. So let's go now to the fifth. Um, Republic. So the Fifth Republic uh, was in terms um, during the Cor uh, Corazon Aquino's presidency. So the National Science and Technology Authority was replaced by the Department of Science and Technology, uh, giving the department a representation in the cabinet. So under the medium term Philippine Development Plan uh, for the years 1987 to 1992. Science and technology's role in economic recovery, sustained economic growth was highlighted uh, during this, uh, during the time of Aquino. Uh, so, science and technology was one of the three priorities of the government towards the towards an economic recovery. So, the first science and technology master plan or the STMP uh, was formulated on August 8, 1988. Uh, yung goal nito was the Philippines to achieve newly industrial country status. Uh, sa year 2000. So during the President Cor Corazon Aquino's term, um, she so encouraged scientists and inventors to bring Philippines to its former position as second to Japan in science and technology and to achieve the status of an industrial country in 2000, in the year 2000. So in the Republic Act 6655 or the Free Public Secondary Education Act of 1988, um, open the free education at the secondary level. So, 
Together with this, uh, was implemented the science for the master's program, uh, which aimed at the scientific and technological lit literacy among Filipinos. So, ito yung mga um, na-enact na, na law during the Fifth Republic. Let's go now to the term of President Fidel V. Ramos. So, there were no noticeable improvements regarding to science and technology during President um, Fidel V. Ramos' term. There was a significant increase in personal, personnel specializing in science and technology. So, in 1988, the Philippines was estimated to have around 3,000 competent scientists and engineers. So, during the Ramos administration, the Department of Science and Technology initiated the Science and Technology Agenda for Development or stand so which embodies the country's task development plan for the 1993 um, to 1998 so in 1998 a presidential task force was formed to deal with the overall problems confronting research and research and development and also science and technology development sa philippines it was tasked to formulate a science and technology development program that could support the national development goal of attaining a newly industrialized country, or an NIC, status by the year 2000. So the task, was force, uh, the task force was composed of the Department of Science and Technology, um, Department of Agriculture, Department of Trade and Dis Industry, Department of Transportation and Communication, as well as the um, advisors on public resources and three academic institutions involved in science and technology. So another science and technology framework plan entitled Competence, Competitive, um, Consci Conscience, Science, uh, the medium term plan for the Department of Science and Technology um, year 1991 to 2004. So, its six flagship programs are, uh, number one, a comprehensive program to enhance technology enterprises. Also, it integrates program on clean technologies. Also, establishment of packaging uh, research and development centers, um, expansion of regional meteorological centers, and science and technology intervention programs for the poor, vulnerable, and disabled and comprehensive science and technology programs for Mindanao. So President Ramos believes that science and technology was one of the main wherein the Philippines could attain the status of newly industrial country. So during his term, he was able to establish programs that were significant to the field of science and technology. Uh, so in 1993, Science and Technology Agenda for National Development or STAND was established. So among its priority were um, exporting miners identified by the DTI, um, domestic leads identified by, by Presidential Council for Countryside Development, um, also support indus industries, um, also coconut industries development. So among the laws enacted by the Congress during President Trump's term were the ito yun, uh, mga Magna Carta for Science and Technology, uh, personnel or Republic Act 8439, um, Science and Technology Scholarship Law of 1004, uh, Republic Act nine, number 7687, and Inventors and Inventions Incentive Act, uh, Republic Act number 7459. Also, the Intellectual Property Code of the Philippines or the Republic Act number 8290 uh, was also enacted. Uh, which provides industrial property rights, copyrights, and relative rights, and technology transfer arrangement. So let's go now to President Joseph Estrada's term. So during the during his term, meron siyang ginawang two major legislations that he signed, um, katulad ng ito, the Philippine Clean Air Act of 1991, or also known as Republic Act 8749. Uh, which was designed to protect and preserve the environment the environment and ensure the sustainable development of its natural resources and also electronic commerce act of 2000 also known as the public act 8792 which outlaws the computer hacking 
and provides opportunities for new business emerging from inter internet-driven new economy. So aside from this, he also launched a full-scale program based on cost-effective irrigation technologies. He also announced that uh, uh, he also announced the Dolly Outs are out, uh, which meant uh, basic healthcare, basic nutrition, and useful education for those who want but cannot afford it. So let's go now to um, science and technology during President Gloria Wakapagal Arroyo's term. So in her administration, the science and technology sector of the Philippines was dubbed as the golden age of science and technology by Secret Secretary Estrella Alabas Alabastro. So um, during this, um, ito yung helping the environment was one of the foci development technology in the Philippines. So one of more known laws to be passed by administration ni Gloria ay yung RA-9367 or the Biofuel Act. So this act promotes the development and the usage of biofuels throughout the country. Uh, this potentially enables a cheaper alternative um, sa gasoline as a medium and it's a, it's a medium introducing energy. Also, this benefits um, ang ating environment since it boosts as cleaner emission um, compared to sa regular fuels natin. Also, may setback siya such as lack of raw materials uh, is holding the full Im implementation nitong law na to. Since importing the necessary materials are important sa paggawa nitong biofuel. So yun. The science, uh, yun. Uh, so also the science and technology and innovations or STI uh, was developed further by the strengthening the schools and education system such as the Philippine Science High School or also known as the PSHS. So yeah, let's go now to uh, President Benigno C. Aquino term. So during during his term um, in an effort to improve the efficiency of both land and water, the government passed the Republic Act um, 10601, which improves the agriculture and fishery sectors through mechanization. So RA 10601 also covers um, research, development, and extension, or RDE, uh, promotion, distribution, supply, assembling, manufacturing, regulation, use, operation, maintenance, and project implementation of agriculture and fisheries machinery and equipment. Um, in the year 2010, President Benigno Aquino was considered the father of organic agriculture. Because of his work uh, on the Organic Agriculture Act of 2010, um, also known as the Republic Act um, 10068, um, it, it develops regarding the research and technology of Philippine agriculture uh, on quality that works. So most of the researches are inclined in solving the problem of increasing hunger in the country um, by creating a more efficient and cheaper process of building pro produce. So the International Rice Research Institute or IRI is an international research consortium including the Philippines uh, which serves to improve the rice production and quality through biotechnology and research. So overall records and statistic, statistics about Philippines agriculture growth by providing the country's stat Philippines. So in 2014, um, gross domestic product or GDP natin increases by 6.13%. So the gross value added naman or GVA in agriculture and fishing went up to 1.60%. And this accounted for 10% of the GDP increase. So the harmonized agenda for science and technology was presented to President Aquino in 2014. And it includes two crucial issues, um, inclusive growth and disaster risk reduction. So on May 23, 2016, um, Republic Act number 19844, or otherwise known as the DICT Act of 2015, uh, was signed into law. Under this law, the Department of Information and Communication Technology will take charge of planning, developing, and promoting the national ICT development agenda. So, yun. So, that is 
to sum it up, um, the state of science and technology sa country natin are largely determined its socio-economic progress. So in other countries of the world, including the Philippines, tayo, has, under, has undergone tedious process of development. Um, nakita niya naman, history will show that there were traces of indigenous technology used by our forefathers as early as the prehistoric times. So there is no doubt that um, with the passing of the years, science and technology has improved immensely with the progress of mankind. So mga breakthrough in science and technology has have improved lives of people across the globe. Uh, also, but it poses also serious concern to mankind uh, because of the improper implementation of technology. Um, the challenge, therefore, is for us to determine the type of future we need to have and then create relevant technologies which will make the world a wonderful place for us to live in. So, any question, Ba? Last? Hello, class. Sir, ang tanong mo po sa iyo, kung ipapost po ba sa yung PPT po sa iyo? Actually, kung ipapost ko yung PPT, puro lang kasi ito pictures. But I'm gonna be...